today's beverage of choice is Blackstone Porter from Driftwood Brewery in Victoria, B.C. A London-style porter uh, with a bittersweet chocolate character and a blend of caramel, black, and chocolate malt. So today I thought I'd uh, take a closer look at this little anti-spy gadget that I got in my last uh, mailbag. It claims to be an anti-surveillance device. It says that it uses active laser scanning and passive wireless method that can identify eavesdropping devices of various sorts. Wired cameras, electrical appliances, and other sources. Right. It's full of spelling mistakes in this uh, goofy little manual, and I, I'm pretty confident that I can't trust this thing to do what it says it uh, does. It might do some things, but uh, it can detect SMS send and receive signals. It can detect cell phone and internet signals. Well, if it can detect any kind of RF, then yeah, it'll detect all RF, probably. Um, leakage of household electrical appliances. So right there, if you're looking for for somebody spying on you, and this thing can pick up leakage from household electrical appliances, how useless is that? I don't know. I'm not even going to bother reading the rest of the whys in that manual. So the f first thing I noticed when I tried it is, and I think I pointed this out in the mailbag, it does have a rechargeable battery in it. And when you plug in the supplied power supply, you can see that there's a little blue LED comes on to light up the horribly cheesy compass as found in the best uh, dollar store kids camping sets. And this thing ins keeps insisting that north is over that way, no matter which way I turn it. Except for that's not north, that's east over there. Um, so, okay, what does this thing have? It comes with a charger, which is plugged into right now. It comes with this little set of earphones, which plug in there. So that uh, the rest of the world doesn't have to listen to it screaming away. Um, these are horribly cheap and hurt the ears. And these aren't even 3.5 millimeters. This is 2.5 millimeter. So you can't even use more comfortable earphones and you can't use these for anything else. Not that you'd want to. I did notice when it's plugged into its charger and I turn it on, it's detecting full tilt. But when I unplug the charger, it calms right down. So its own charger is either noisy enough to upset its detector or its detector is not, not very uh, selective. So you can change the sensitivity of the detection. I'm just going to turn it down so it's not detecting my hand. Because that's one thing that it does seem to do. Um, and as I showed you in the uh, in the mailbag video, I, mean, I tried it near a couple of things. There's a, a, wire, a Wi-Fi radio device in there. And it's, it's sort of clicking occasionally. But then again, when I touch it to anything it's detecting off my bottle of alcohol over there um it's oh it's not okay at one point it was detecting off my power my switching power supply here um but if i hold it up to my phone yes this is this my camera is a cell phone cell phones are rf devices it's not detecting anything I'll turn up the sensitivity a little bit. Now it's detecting everything, including my hand. So I'll just bring it just down below its little sensitivity level. Bring it up to the phone. Nothing. Bring it back there. Yeah, maybe it's detecting something off that. I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to tell. So I'm going to turn that noisemaker down. It's also got a little buzzer, a vibrator inside it. So you can, according to the manual, discreetly have it in your pocket. And it'll just buzz when it picks up something. Like your cell phone going off, maybe, or the Wi-Fi in the room. So the other thing it claims is that it uses a laser detection to detect cameras. 
it does that by having these blinking red no they're not lasers these are just leds however if you push and hold the button the controls that turns them on and off you can change how fast they blink which i guess is a feature and you can turn them on and off They go way up and then solid on, and then they go back down to a nice slow flash. So it claims that that, plus this little red lens in here, lets you detect camera lenses, uh, hidden camera lenses. So let's get some cameras down in here. Here's my little SQ8 uh, little camera. Here is a cell phone with a camera lens. Here is a, an ancient webcam. So let's see if we can detect any of these things. Oh, so you can see a little bit of reflection off the glass of that lens. Okay. And how about the uh, this guy? At this distance, you can see a little bit of reflection off the lens. What happens if we get a little bit further away? Yeah, sort of if you get straight on the axis, but anywhere else, you can't. But if you're straight on axis with any reflective surface, it can. Okay. How about the cell phone? Well, yeah, you can sort of detect the camera lens there, but you can also pick up the chrome just as much. So, I don't know how useful that laser is. Except for it's another Y. Uh, okay, oh, whatever. Yeah, that, that's enough poking fun at this thing. It's obviously a cheap piece of shit. More interestingly, let's see what's inside it, shall we? So there's got four screws in the back of here. Oh, yoink those out and see what's under there. I'm predicting there's not very much. Maybe just like a a simple, almost as simple as a crystal radio receiver circuit, maybe. Something pretty basic. Oh, there's a few things going on in there. Okay, uh, and there's a little lithium ion pack, which feels a little spongy and gassy. I don't know, can you see that? Yee. But it does have a little protection circuit in it, so that's nice. I think that's a protection circuit anyway. It looks like there's something going on in there. Kind of crusty soldering, but whatever. So there is a little vibrating motor. There is the lasers, which are simply LEDs. Um, wonder if we can light one of those up. So I've got about three and a half volts on here and I've got it current limited 20 some milliamps. Let's, uh, put these across one of these so-called lasers yeah you can see them glowing there that pulls down to 1.9 volts so that's just a red LED it's just a standard set of nice bright little red LEDs nothing nothing magical going on at all not lasers Let's see what some of these things on the board are here. LM358. Bog standard op amp. Nothing special about that. And what is this guy? <laughs> it is a secret. Not holding out any great hope that it's something super magical or anything, but... Oh, that's interesting. Those LEDs are on a subboard that's sandwiched on top of the main board. Can you see that there? That's interesting, I suppose. I spent a bit more time poking around this uh, LM358 op amp. So this, this side of it, uh, the two input pins are grounded and the output pin goes nowhere, so they're only using half of it. Um, and this side here, the uh, which one is it? the non-inverting input comes um, past the resistor and off the collector of 
this transistor so that's all um, amplifier amplifier and into the op amp and then the output of the op amp goes over to what we're assuming here is the microcontroller so let's and I don't see any diodes hang on yeah I don't see any diodes associated with that that would be rectifying or detecting the RF so it's probably just amplifying it up um, and maybe there maybe some of these capacitors are giving it a bit of a timing constant but it's just amplifying the signal up and it's going into presumably an analog input it might be going into a digital input I don't know um, the only clue that I have about this what I think is a microcontroller is it says pick right there is that some sort of a pick microcontroller I don't know I don't know pick microcontrollers at all but that's what I'm gonna go with so, you know the battery is coming from over here there's a bunch of c components that aren't populated including an inductor a diode some capacitors so that looks like some power supply circuitry that's been omitted a little diode there which is probably steering the power either from the internal battery or or the external jack I would guess uh, the date on the PCB is 2016 hmm They're making these little turds for a while okay not a huge amount to see in there let's just take a closer look at this compass now that it doesn't have a magnet in proximity to it and yeah it's pointing closer to north but yeah as soon as i bring that little speaker on the circuit board closer to it it points straight at it every single time let's uh live a little bit dangerously and peel the cap on off this battery and just see what's on that little protection board there oh wow that is just a little concerning that it's so puffy and that came off easily okay that's not really a surprise that's a dw01 so that's just a standard battery protection uh, chip and it's mosfet okay but yeah now, can you see that yeesh you know what might be more interesting is taking a look inside its uh, power supply it's probably pretty cheap and shitty too it says on it 5 volt 500 milliamp so nothing too spectacular not even sure what I'd reuse that for and you could hear earlier that it was pretty noisy okay just unclip that uh, capacitors this is designed to have a USB connector on there so it's designed just to be a normal little five volt charge board okay so it's a fairly basic little just switching power supply rectifier diode there uh transistor or smoothing capacitor transistor oscillator um, transformer one of these is a rectifier diode the other one's a zener to set the five volts uh, back through the optocoupler to uh, through this transistor to control the amplitude of the oscillation going into the transformer and there's your closed loop here's the two ac inputs at 110 volts um pretty meager separation there there's your split between the high voltage and the low voltage yeah so there's the closest point that the high voltage and the low voltage gets to each other that's not great that's pretty tight uh, for arcing over on the input side um, that's pretty tight there too uh, this track right here is one side of the AC incoming theoretically neutral but this thing's not polarized so you plug it in either way up so that could just as easily be live not at all what I would call a safe thing ah, the 5 volt line on the output is pinched 
Nice. Ooh, you know this leads folded over there for the resistor for this LED. Yeah, that's only five volts, but come on, guys. Really? And again, that one, it wouldn't take much if something just mashed against it to short some of those across the tracks. Yeah, like this little guy here, and this is on my voltage side. And actually, is that... That's one transistor junction away from being hot. Look at that. Wow. Yeah. Not, uh, not a quality item. But not really anything that I didn't expect with this cheap little piece of shit. Like I said, I only paid, what was it, uh, $2.94 at auction for this thing as a curiosity just to see exactly how shitty it is. Bottom line, yeah, don't waste your money unless you want, you know, some nice bright LEDs and a vibrating motor. And, oh, look, that's already broken off. I didn't even notice that before. That little connection to the battery when I unfolded it just completely broke off. Wow. I guess I don't have to worry about that board being live then or shorting out my uh, lithium cell. Anyway, it was <laughs> kind of fun going through this thing. Maybe the compass will be uh, useful for something. I'll stick it on the dog's leash. Um, yeah, well, if, uh, <laughs> if you have any... Uh, any conflicting opinions uh or you just want to laugh with me uh please join me down in the comments section i will uh yeah talk to you later thanks for watching